Is this the solution? Oh my God, we have a problem. Have a look at this. Today is gonna be an absolutely crazy day. So go and grab yourself a cup of tea and let me explain what we're doing today. So we're gonna kick it off with my first client who wants an EV charging point installed. However, they do not want a proper seven kilowatt charger. So I'm installing this posh Hager 13 amp EV charging point socket. I have a few questions about this if I'm honest. Firstly, it specifically says on there, suitable for EV charging points. So what makes this different to any other outdoor socket? Later on, I'm gonna phone up Hager and try and find out. And just to be clear, this client only has a hybrid, so he doesn't wanna fork out for a seven kilowatt charger, saving himself between four and 600 quid. So if you have a hybrid or you have a customer who has a hybrid, is this the solution? You may have noticed that I'm sat in the van also hiding in the back. And that is because my client doesn't want me to film this install and reveal or show where his property is, which is fine. That's his discretion and I'd need to respect his privacy. So I'm gonna try and talk you through and show you on another job how I'm going to install this without showing you this being installed. And it was supposed to be a nice, easy day today, but I've had two phone calls for two separate EV chargers, and apparently they're both tripping out and making popping noises, which is a concern. So I'm gonna take you along with me today, and we're gonna find out what's going on. On hold to Hager Technical Support. Could be a while. Oh, hello there. I was just I had a quick question for you, if you can help me possibly. Um, yeah. Basically, I've got a client who is after a, a socket outlet for a hybrid car, and I've come across your IP66 blue EV charging socket. Um, yeah. And I was just curious to know is what separates this from any other external socket? Let me see if I can... Yeah, so you look at the electric vehicle socket over there, yeah? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was your inquiry again, sorry? Uh, how is this um, any different from any other external socket? Well, it just would have been tested to comply with the load, etc. And it would be up to date with the current regs for each EV application. Okay. So, in, in terms of yeah. the actual build of it, it's probably no different to any other socket? Potentially not, no, but yeah, I'd say we would have tested this device within an EV application. Okay. And it will confirm with the current regulations. Okay, all right. Well, yeah. that's fine then, all right. If, that, if that's all, that's, there's no real difference, then that, that's absolutely fine. All right, was that even for you? Yeah, that's fine, that's brilliant. Well, thank you for your help. All right, my pleasure. Cheers. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. So there you have it. Basically, that socket I've just installed is a posh outside socket. So... <laughs> I don't know what to say. Obviously, it's been tested. They've said it's been tested, so I imagine it's been tested over a long duration of time, which is expected with a hybrid electric car on charge. So maybe other regular sockets haven't. If you know anything about that, leave it in the comments below. It'll be a good discussion to have, I think. Otherwise, I've got a little booklet here. All it really says is that electric vehicle charging point product reference WXP ss 81 ev is adapted specifically for the purpose of EV charging and a distinctive blue cover and a distinctive blue color, sorry, for ease of ident identification and additional earth terminal is supplied. So 
Are you paying over the odds for a fancy blue socket? They couldn't really clarify if like the build of it was any different. So who knows? Anyway, now we're off to a Indra that's making popping noises. So concerning, let's see what's happening. I'm not gonna do the classic turn it on and see what happens on this one because my client said that they've seen it like arcing. So I'm gonna inspect the consumer unit first and then inspect the charger. And if there's nothing obvious, I'll carry out some tests. So there's no obvious signs of anything wrong here. No signs of any overheating or burning. So what I'm gonna do is take the front cover off the charger and see what we find. I installed this charger about six months ago and I made a video on it. It had over a quarter of a million views. It's quite a good one to watch. So if you wanna see it, I'll leave a link in the description below. It's an interesting install. Wrong size. quite annoying taking these covers off because all the screws are definitely going to fall out and they're like recessed so oh, there you go lost that one it's lost two. Oh my god we have a problem have a look at this so this is the cable that goes into the charger and then as we go round, these lever terminals that come pre-wired with the charger have clearly failed. Game over. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna phone Indra and find out what the process is because these are not my terminations. These are the manufacturer ones. So I'll find out now what they're gonna do. They should hopefully replace us for free and pay me to reinstall it. All calls are recorded for training and quality purposes. So are mine. Press one. Let's see how long I'm on hold for today. Hello, hello there. It's Adam from Soto Electrical and your lever terminals that the tethered cable goes into, it's failed and the back of the charge is completely burnt. Sun's out, but it's raining. So I've got a six mil feeding it, but it's not that terminals. It's the terminals that go to the, for the charging cable. Yeah, I've, yeah. Not, I've not seen this before. Okay, and last question I have, do you, do you offer any warranty payments for this install that I'm gonna have to come back and do? All right, All right that's brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your help. You've been very helpful today. Yeah. I have made previous comments in our, another video about how unhelpful Indra are. Today, they've been exceptional. So I do appreciate that, thank you. And they've been very good about this, to be honest. And I'm not gonna slag off Indra or the charger because I've installed quite a lot of these chargers and this is the first one that I've had any issues with. And they were surprised to see that as well when I sent them the photo. I've had far more issues with the Zappies. So they've been good as gold. They're gonna send out a new charger tomorrow and then we'll get it swapped over. And I'll video that one. I personally think that those lever connections for the cable may be not the best idea because that look is what looks like failed. So all I'm going to do now, so all I'm going to do now is pop the cover back on this and advise my customers not to turn this back on until I'm back in a few days. The next one is a Omi charger that I only installed last week, which was in fact a replacement. So let's see what's happened there. Let's see what's going on here then. Very much the same as the last one. 
My client said they saw a spark when they tried to turn the breaker back on, so I'm not gonna turn it on straight away. I'm gonna take the cover off, check the junction box and see if there's anything visual first. So on this one, I installed a Luden separate consumer unit and we've got the B40 MCB, which feeds the EV RCD down, which tells me that it's a short circuit fault potentially. So again here, visually, everything looks good. No signs of burning or damage or anything anywhere there. So next I'm gonna have a look inside the junction box and see if there's any signs of burning or anything in there. which there isn't, looks absolutely fine. So what I'm gonna do is disconnect my cable feeding this and just run a mega test through it, make sure the cable's all intact, which I'm pretty sure it is because it's just surface clipped. So there's no chance of any rodents. So I will just check that first. So that's clear, that's clear, and that's clear. So I'm satisfied that the cable's not damaged. <sighs> So that's all nice and tight and we'll turn it back on. Okay, so that, that seems to be holding and we have power on. The trouble with these Omis is that I can't get to the connections inside here to check anything, which is incredibly annoying. And I hate the fact that there's a junction box there because it's another joint in the cable, which I really don't want. Either way, all I can do is sit tight really and see if he has any more issues. And if he does, then it's this that's going back again. So quickly back to the original job with the EV 13 amp socket. The way I carried out that installation is very similar to the ones that I've shown you today, where I installed a separate consumer unit again. The existing one was a Crabtree star breaker. So all I'd done was I put in a 40 amp MCB, which fed my secondary consumer unit. That way I can put in a metal consumer unit that's fire rated and surge protection. Then I ran a four mil SWA to the external socket. Easy as that. I wish I could have shown you it really, but there's nothing I can do. Got to respect people's privacies, I guess. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel.